Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this little video about Redux process. So I've get some question about Redux process and why I use it and stuff like that. And I was thinking about just making a video about how awesome this library can be with your project, with React and Redux. Uh, I'm, I mean, uh, you can use it with other thing than uh, React for sure, because it's for Redux only. So, you know, you can use Redux with Angular, blah, blah, blah. So you, you know what I mean? So this library here, it's for persisting your store and reiterate your store. Why use it? It's because, example, if you use the local storage or something like that, uh, it can be pretty hard, I mean, to always get your stuff. And the same for React Native, getting the async storage and stuff like that. And as you know, when you build an app with Redux and you refresh the screen, you lose all your state. So this is where Redux process can come. It make your life really easy with Redux to persist your stuff so this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna put this link in the description don't worry about that so here i've created a little application where uh it's not an application i know but it's really simple it's uh, using redux and stuff like that it's here you see the initial state so the app what you do it's here you can enter your name so example uh, john uh, snow and when i click log now i'm now logging and i have my username of john snow right there and also, I can increment and I can decrement the count. Why I show you that is because I'm going to show you what you can do for filtering some reducer. So my plan with this little uh, video is to show you that you can persist some, um, some reducer, the one you want only, and you can filter like the other one and also, or you can purge and make sure that you, you lose everything inside your store so you see what it was you do process why use it it's just because it's gonna make your life so much easier to persist some of your store uh, your stuff and redirect your store finally also I'm gonna show you how to install it so this is what we're gonna do so uh, just go to your command line uh, when you build your application and the only thing you need to run it's redux uh, persist yarn add redux persist nothing more it's not crazy one little library that's gonna be just awesome. You're gonna see. So now, after it's built, go inside your store where you create your um, your, your Redux store finally. And at the top of it, you're gonna need to uh, import from uh, Redux persist the thing called auto re e -direct. So as you know, that's gonna be the thing about reiterating your uh, your store. This thing. You, you're gonna put that here inside this uh, Compose. If you don't use Compose with DevTool, what you can do is take Compose from Redux and change the Compose with DevTool like that. So finally, you're gonna just compose many functions inside your store just by doing this. This Compose with DevTool, it's because I want to run my state right here inside the Redux uh, uh, store uh, debugger. So now we're gonna see if that's gonna just work. But this is not the only thing we need to do. Now we're gonna need to go to the app. So where the app is starting, and this is where we're gonna do some kind of uh, logic. And you're gonna see it's gonna be pretty, uh, really easy logic. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import uh, persist store coming in from uh, Redux persist. So persist store here, it's finally uh, the function we're gonna persist, uh, we're gonna finally read uh, your store at the beginning of your application. So that's why I told you go to app, go to your main uh, enter point, go to the first component of your application. After that here, because I'm using React Native, I'm gonna use the uh, local storage, but here they show you all to use it, like async storage for React Native, local storage for the web, blah, blah, blah. So you should really read this uh, stuff. So now I'm gonna show you about the async storage. Async storage is the storage we have access in React Native. So async uh, storage coming in from uh, React Native. I'm gonna see why, because here what I'm gonna do now, it's I'm gonna call my uh, component in mouth so when the, the component mount finally, and I'm gonna call the function persist store. This function need uh, to uh, have three arguments. The first one is gonna take your store, so the 
Redux store, so the same store as you provided right there. Just remove that. Also, we're gonna uh, need to receive an object. Inside this object, we can pass storage, and the storage here is gonna be equal to my async storage. So for you, if you came from the web or something like that, that's gonna be maybe like local forage or something like this. After that, here, we're gonna have access to our callback right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just make it a bit easier to read. Like that. And now here, we're gonna have like a, a callback method. And here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a state here, who's gonna be is ready. So that's gonna be about my app is ready or not. Why I'm doing this is because this thing can take some amount of time. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say when it's done to just set state my is ready to be true. And what I'm gonna do uh, for now is I'm gonna just uh, take uh, the app loading component from uh, Expo. If you use uh, the web, you can just put a H1 loading or whatever you want. You just here, I just want to make my life easier. Now what I'm gonna say, it's if this, that state that is ready, it's false, I'm gonna return the app loading component. So now I'm gonna do this, and now I'm gonna save, and I'm gonna just check if my debugger, I'm gonna get some error. Sec, take some amount of time. I think it's maybe because I'm uh, because I'm doing a video, so you take uh, my computer is really slow right now. Looks like we have no error, but you see here we get read rate the function. I get that because I have Redux logger, and you see here the payload. The payload was nothing. So now, now you maybe say, okay, I'm gonna increment some stuff here. So you see my start it's 13, and now I'm gonna refresh this thing. And now what happened? I keep my 13. Yeah, because Redux uh, persists now, get your state and return you what you have before. So my con was 13, it keep as 13. If I now say here my user is gonna be John Snow and I'm logging and I see now my con is gonna be 10 and I'm refreshing my app. You see the readers process? 10, log, true, John Snow. So I get all the feel, the feed. And you see, it's all about because my payload returned the counter and the user info and stuff like that. So by default, if you do like I just show you, Redux process is gonna fill all your reducer. What I mean by that, it's inside my index.js where I do my combined reducer, I have access to two reducer, user and counter. Because I told my uh, Redux process to just nothing, like no option, you're gonna feel everything. But this is maybe not what you want. You want maybe to just keep the user, a uh, reducer uh, to be the, the only one you save. So you're gonna say white uh, uh, list, this is an array and you call the name of your reducer. So now I'm gonna say user, I'm gonna refresh. I'm gonna just whitelist the, the user. So now what's gonna happen? It's as you see, now I'm gonna get a payload only of the user. So the username and the is log. Now my counter don't work anymore. If I, if you want to change, sorry. If you want to change here, you can just say counter and now that's gonna be the counter. So you get what I mean? But now you say, okay, yeah, black, uh, whitelist, it's okay. I mean, it can be pretty good to just whitelist everything. But if you want, you can also blacklist and I'm gonna blacklist the user, I'm gonna increment some stuff here and I'm gonna blacklist the user. I think this is all that type, one sec, we're gonna see. And that's gonna be almost the same, yeah. Now the user, it's not there. So I mean, if you want to keep all your reducer but only one you don't want to keep, you can just blacklist, it's gonna be really easier for you. So for me, what I like is the whitelist. I, I think it's just easier for me to, to remember what I need to do. 
But now the thing is, now you have all your stuff. So we're going to say we have counter two. We have everything. So I'm going to just whitelist everything. One sec, it's going to surely work. Okay. So now I have everything. It's perfect, it's worked. But now the thing is, now I'm developing and I have maybe like uh, my reducer change or I want to test like uh, the user get logged back, like uh, logging uh, false finally. So what I can do to make it work, I can purge right there at the end of the function here, purge. And what's gonna make the purge? It's gonna finally remove everything you have saving inside the Redux process. So I mean, you don't, you're don't. gonna just remove everything. So now you see, it get weird rate and the payload is an empty object. So now everything starts from scratch. So this way, I mean, sometimes I develop some uh, application and I just want to, uh, like, uh, to test uh, from a new user coming in to my app. The user just downloaded it from the app store, something like that. And always remember, what I've shown you is gonna work the same as you go on the web. The only thing, only thing you're gonna need to change is the way to set up the storage, but it's really important for you to um, like to read how to install it in local uh, forage here. Uh, they just show you all that work here, and that's gonna make sense. I mean, their docs are really really good, and as you can see here, I have in I have nothing. Uh, I didn't create nothing. I mean, the the pose is there if you want to pose the persistence. The purge is there with the key. And also, you can have uh, the blacklist, the whitelist, the story that I just told you, the transform, the debuns, if you want to uh, have a debun, uh, like uh, some kind of time, and stuff like that. And just go in and try it. And I'm not alone. Look at that on, uh, on many star. I'm not alone using Redux process. It just makes so many sense. If you work with React Native and you work with some of my tutorials, you see I'm using it a lot. So that can be a good place for you to install, uh, to pass like, some user information or you want to keep that uh, between uh, kind of session and stuff like that. So I hope you enjoyed this little episode and we're gonna talk later and please subscribe if you didn't and let me know in the comment how you feel about that and all the links about what I've taken to learn this, I'm gonna push it to my description. So I hope you enjoy and we're gonna talk later. Have a good night, bye.